Hey everybody, so we're doing Q&A today. I've got my tablet with my screenshots of the emails that were sent to me. And um, a couple of you had a lot of questions, so it's a good thing I didn't get a lot of emails because um, like one person has 14 questions. So um, that's cool. That makes up for the lack of emails. So the day you've been waiting for. Um, yeah, probably not. So anyway, I have decided to call my Q&A's What's Up Wednesdays. So I'm going to try and do one every week, every Wednesday, obviously, hence the name What's Up Wednesdays. And I have my plug-in earbuds that I use when I'm in the van watching things at night. I have those hooked onto my shirt here, so I hope they act as a good microphone. We will see. Otherwise, I will be shooting this video all over again. So, all right, the first email is from and I think I'm gonna have to take my glasses off um, Hallie all right I'm not gonna say anyone's first name unless it's um, clearly like a YouTube name like a made-up name like my made-up name is Crystal Banner Crystal is my real first name but Banner is not my last name so I'm gonna this looks like a person's real name so I'm not gonna say their last name so this is for Hallie and it says Hi Crystal, I have a few questions for you. Let me turn this around this way, then I can zoom. My apologies if you've already answered them in the past in a past video. I'm playing catch up, trying to watch them all. Number one, the obvious question is what or who gave you the idea of living in your van? Was there a specific situation that prompted the change? If you check my um, in my Veda videos, I have one titled My Story. That's going to give you more detail. Um, long story short. I wanted to live in a tiny home. I was married. The marriage was on the rocks. Um, watching so many tiny home YouTube videos led to YouTube recommending van dwelling. I don't know how YouTube decided that, but that's cool with me because now here I am. So I started watching those and I watched so many of them, which led me to Bob Wells, which is cheaprvliving.com. Um, he's on YouTube and he has an um, actual blog. And he did interviews almost all the time. And so I watched all his interviews of other people living in vans and cars and trucks and whatever they could vehicle they could get their hands on, I guess. And that prompted me to decide, yes, I can do this quicker because I really didn't have money for a tiny home. And um, we were living check to check and then always in the negative every month. So I knew I couldn't save for a tiny home. So my first goal was to save for a tiny home by living in my vehicle for a few years. I've decided now that I don't want a tiny home until I retire and can no longer travel. And I'll buy a small piece of land, put a tiny home on it, um, because I want to travel and tiny homes are not really meant for traveling, maybe once or twice a year moving it, but it's not meant for the kind of traveling I want to do and the places I want to go. So, hope that answers your question. Watch the My Story video. Number two, you've touched on in recent videos, but you, but you, but are you considering getting another vehicle, maybe a cargo van or conversion van? Good question. Yes, if you had asked me last year, cargo van was my next van. It was going to be my next van. No questions asked. Now, I think I would next year, I would probably get another minivan. Two reasons. Gas mileage is the number one reason. Well, three reasons. Two, um, maneuverability to get um, into you know, places I want to go, like down near lakes and near rivers and stuff like that. And three, um, no one pays attention to another minivan parked on the street or in a parking lot. So I probably will just get another minivan, probably a newer model because mine's a 96 and she's got high miles. So probably something slightly newer with two sliding doors because I only have one sliding door. Um, I feel like the two sliding doors give you um, a little more room in that middle section. So um, yeah, I would like two sliding doors. Um, and the, the main reason I want two sliding doors is I um, would like to have my bed on the passenger side because I can slide the passenger seat up all the way, which would give me more room. And um, have my stuff that I have on my passenger side now be on the driver's side and get use the side door on the driver's side instead of the passenger side. All right, three, what other YouTubers do you watch and subscribe to? Who are your five, oh boy, top fives? Ooh, that is good. Um, I'm not going to do them in any particular order, just as they come to mind. I just went through my whole subscription list and deleted a lot of people I was not following at all. Um, so, Bob Wells, CheapRVLiving.com, and uh, DreamSideOut. 
I like him. Um, uh, a new couple who is um, in their van, black couple, is um, Novel Culture. I will try and remember to put these in the description um, box. If I don't, please comment and I will answer your comment. Um, so that's three. Who else? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I really like um, um, Element, Element Van Life. I like him. Uh, I think his name is Nathan, I think. Ooh, I'm really bad at names. Uh, I really like his videos. Um, I love the fact that he's living in a, um, an element, which that's not something you see very often. It makes me wish I had kept my um, SUV or got another SUV. I just kind of like that SUV ruggedness. Um, and the fifth one, who else? Hmm, I'm trying to see. Um, maybe. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of a woman. I don't really I like Pandemonium. She's pretty good. So um, yeah. So I guess those would be the five. All right. Um, let's see. Do you consider yourself a minimalist? What are some of your tips for shedding extra stuff? All right. Um, I guess you would consider me a minimalist. I obviously everything I own is in my vehicle. I no longer have a um, storage. Only kept it for one year, and that was one year too long. Um. Yeah, so I guess, yes, I would be a minimalist, and how do I get rid of it? I have never been a person who was attached to stuff. The only things that I've ever really um, been attached to are photos, and unfortunately, I lost all of my baby photos and all my youth photos um, because my first husband didn't pay a storage where they were stored, and I had already come back to Virginia and he was in Iowa and he was supposed to send me this one box that had my diploma and all my photos in it because when I got married my mom gave me all my um, um, the three photo albums that she had of mine from birth all the way through you know school so that's one thing that I have um, maybe an attachment to because those things are irreplaceable but mine are all lost I do have my sons and until I scan them onto a hard drive and a flash drive and put them in my Google Drive, I will then give him the actual photos. So, yeah, I mean, I just go through my clothes all the time, um, especially at the end of a season. Like, I mean, this is August, so probably by October, I will go through my summer stuff and say if I didn't wear it or if I only wore it once this summer, it has to go. So I've always been that kind of person. I've never been a woman with a lot of clothes or a lot of shoes. So. Um, let's see, next. Do you have a significant other? No, I am not dating anyone. I am on paper still married. Uh, we are separated, but not legally separated. I left on August 27th, 2015, and I have not heard from him since, even though I've tried to contact him several times to um, get the divorce started. Uh, I feel like we should both pay for the div divorce, and so I assume that until he's ready to marry someone, he knows how to contact me. My phone number and my uh, personal email have been the same for the last 15 to 20 years. Um, I do not plan on ever getting married again. Uh, two marriages failed is... I get it. I'm not the marrying type. Um, six. As a black woman traveling alone, have you encountered many issues? Do you have any tips for staying safe on the road? Um, I haven't, you guys have to realize I haven't traveled much. Um, I have lived for two years in my van, but I worked a full-time job. So I stayed in the area I grew up in, I'm familiar with. Um, but when I do take little trips and travel, I don't feel afraid. I guess that's just not part of my nature. Because, I mean, you can get robbed or raped in your home. So, I mean, I feel like being in a vehicle is not less or more safe than being in a home to me. I do carry a knife. Um, I'm not at the van, it's in the parking lot. But I do carry a knife. Um, and I got, for my birthday this year, I got a really nice honey knife from my cousin Larry. Thanks, Larry. And um, he wants me to get a gun. My son wants me to get a gun. The only reason I'm afraid of getting a gun is traveling through states, um, different states, gun laws are different. Um, and so, I mean, even having a license to carry doesn't mean that I won't get shot by a cop. So, um, thinking of getting a taser and maybe some kind of a, um, spray to, as a deterrent. 
Um, my feeling is, I'm um, sorry, I covered the mic. My feeling is if you break into my vehicle while I'm in it, my knife is always either on my hip or right next to me. So be prepared to die that day because I'm going to be prepared to kill you. So that's just my theory. Whatever you reach into my van, hand-wise, I'm chopping it off. Um, okay. Um, but it is more difficult, I would say, as a black person traveling and um, a black woman. Um, just the culture of America. It's, it's a racist country, and not everybody's racist, but being from Virginia, which is the South, and the, the, some of the parts of Virginia that I've been to recently, um, it's very much... You can feel the difference than in Northern Virginia, where I'm from, which is closer to DC. You can definitely feel the difference, the way people look at you. Like I have a unicorn horn coming out of my head and how I go into these towns and there's no black people no matter where I go. So yeah, it's, it's different, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm not gonna live my life in fear. Um, seven, what are your plans if you start having mechanical issues while traveling next month? Do you have roadside assistance? Uh, well, I pray I have no mechanical issues, and if I do, I pray there are issues that I can fix. Uh, and I do have roadside assistance. I just got that added a few months ago, so um, not your mama's van. Has a good, strong heart, and I'm hoping she's good to go. Um, do I have a gym membership for showers? Do you pay use truck stop showers? I hear some of them are pretty nice. I have never been in a truck stop shower, so I don't know what they look like. I've seen someone take a video camera, I mean a cell phone, into one and show around. And they look awesome but um, I used to have a Planet Fitness membership um, but because my job has a shower or has had a shower because I worked at a middle school so locker rooms excuse me um, I canceled the Planet Fitness membership last school year and I haven't gotten it back yet I will probably get it back when I leave here my son's place in um, on August 30th I will probably get a new Planet Fitness membership, but I think I'm going to wait until after October. Reason being, a lot of people don't know this, Planet Fitness, and a lot of other gyms are now doing this, has a one-time, um, not annual, yes, an annual fee, a maintenance fee, on top of your monthly fee. So once a year, you pay $50 in October. So I will probably wait till November 1st to get my Planet Fitness membership. I am totally fine with taking a bird bath or a whole bath. Yes, a whore bath. Um, I am not sweaty, I'm not funky, I don't smell. Um, but when I take a bird bath, I have a basin, I fill with water and soap, and I use a washcloth, and I wash my entire body, starting with my face and everything, all the way down to my feet. I, and I really don't just do my armpits and privates and that's it. So I really kind of scrub down. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you think about it, showers every day is kind of a new concept. People didn't used to take showers every single day like that, and they were just fine. I mean, unless you are super funky, I don't see the need to take an actual shower every day. All right, um, number nine, how long do you plan to be a van dweller? As long as my finances is, yeah, that didn't sound right. As long as my finances and my body and my vehicle allow me to be so as long as i'm physically able financially able and have a vehicle that's willing to go and travel that's how long i plan on doing it all right 10 i think you're creating the stickers and t-shirts for extra income yet yeah, right how else do you plan to support yourself um it would be nice to just be able to do the t-shirt and stickers for income i can live on 600 a month um it's tight but i can do it uh, I will be getting a part-time job once I get to Arizona in October, so I have toyed around with doing some kind of jewelry making. Um, I've done a little bit of jewelry making, but for myself, so I've toyed around with um, doing that and trying to sell it, but we'll see. There's also, um, you know, people who buy and sell on eBay, but the thing about that is I don't carry a trailer, and I'm not putting stuff in my van, crowding myself to sell on eBay. So, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of winging this. This is all new. Because like I said, I was working a job, so... Um, let's see, 11. I really want to start van dueling. I think it would be so therapeutic in so many ways, but I'm terrified of getting the wrong vehicle. How did you choose your van? 
If you could do it again, would you choose something different? My van was chosen because my SUV required too much money to fix, and my van was $800 on Craigslist. If I could do it again, would I choose something different? Yes, I would choose something slightly newer with um, fewer mechanical issues because I did put quite a bit of money into her. And um, I think I might have just gotten some kind of a truck and did a truck camper. I really kind of like the truck campers. And I'm not talking about the camper, those huge campers that have the thing that go over the cab. I mean, um, the pickup trucks that just have the little camper shell on the back. That's what I'm talking about. So I, I really, really like those. And who knows, that might be my next vehicle instead of a minivan, I don't know. But I really am fascinated with the truck campers. So I know it's a little less room inside, but I don't know. I just like that truck feel. Um, 12. There is a van build happening in Lake Havasu in November and RTR in January. Do you plan to attend? Yes, I will be at both of those because I plan to be in Arizona by November 1st. Um, hopefully by October 31st I'll be there because I'll be looking for a job um, working part-time and staying there in that area. 13. This month you're staying with your son, but what does it cost you a month to live in your van when traveling? This is my first time traveling while living in my van, so... I won't have those numbers for a couple of months. Like I said, I could live on $600, it would be fine. But the only thing that would fluctuate would be gas prices because gas is different in every state. My food would probably be the same. I eat very light. Um, I usually eat raw fruits and vegetables, oatmeal, soups, crackers and tuna. I eat very light. So I don't require a lot of cooking. Um, I don't plan on cooking anymore. If I have, if I can avoid it, um, I don't turn down a home cooked meal though. If someone wants to offer, um, number fourteen. Um, so yeah, in a couple months, I will probably be doing a um, video on what I spend traveling. So probably between two and four months, I'll do a video on that. All right, fourteen. Where is the one place you have not been to that you would like to visit within the next six months to a year? Wow. Um, that's hard because I've never been one of those people who, um, um, traveled. But the one thing I would love to do in the next six months to a year is go on a cruise. I have always wanted to go on a cruise and I have never been on a cruise. So I would love to be going somewhere on a cruise and it doesn't really matter where because I've never been one of those people who had a, um, uh, I must travel gene. Um, so I think anywhere would be fine with me. Bahamas, um, maybe Caribbean though. I think Caribbean would probably be the best for a first time cruiser maybe. I don't know. Oh, my leg is going to sleep. All right. I had my leg up. All right. So that was from Hallie. Next up is Felicia. Hey Crystal, sorry about the late email. I'm a procrastinator. Your videos are helpful. Appreciate the no edit format. Thank you. It's real life and it helps me to see this lifestyle without a filter, which I find especially important because I see myself as a future full-time van dweller in a month or so. All right. I can't wait to see you out there, Felicia. Um, here go my questions. I'll do my best not to email anymore, <laughs> but I will save for next Q&A. All right. Who are some of your van dwelling inspirations? Okay. I already went through that. Um, Hallie asked the same question. Do you follow Ignat Ig 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 Ignatic Nomadic? Are you going to his van build? Yes, I do follow him, and yes, I will be at the van build. Um, do I have a job I want him to do? I don't necessarily have a job that I want him to do because I don't feel like I have a huge need. Um, I'd rather kind of hang out, and I know there are people who have a real need for a build, and so I'd rather let those people get their things done. If at some point, though, um, I'm able to get something done, the only two things I really want done are my bed to lift up on hinges and um, two shelves in the back of my van where my stuff in the back of my van, you know, the hatch, two, two or three shelves right there um, to put those bags on so that when I need to get something, I don't have to move the top bags off. I just, you know what I mean? So if I can get those things done, cool. If not, no big deal. They'll happen at some point. Um, do you follow Bob? Yes, I do follow Bob. Yes, I will be at the RTR in January. These are all my plans. Um, do you feel like you've met a lot of people who come from a similar background as you do? Do they live as mobile dwellers? I think I have come into contact um, 
on the internet with a lot of people who have a similar background and there are now more black people doing this which I thank God for um, the, and that are also documenting their journeys that's the key I think black people have been doing this for a while but they have not been documenting their journey because of the stigma not this in the black community but for some reason and, and please don't take this the wrong way, anybody, black or white or any other race. If a black person is living in their vehicle, it's I think it's looked more down upon than a Caucasian. And the reason I say that is they're, a Caucasian is seen more as a free spirit or a hippie when they do it, whereas a black person is seen more as a, a low life or a homeless person or dirty or, you know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people of color who were doing this weren't broadcasting it because of that. And, the you know, our, our families think this, we're crazy. This is not something black people do. A lot of black people don't even camp. So to actually go purposely live in your van camping all over the place, you're crazy. So anyway, please don't be offended by that. This is my personal opinion. Um, let's see. What kind of part-time work would you be happy with? I want something I don't have to think about. I worked um, for 22 years as a licensed cosmetologist and I'm still able to cut hair, I just don't have a license. Um, I have toyed with the idea of getting my license back and just going back and doing hair, but physically the standing for that many hours and the um, shoulders and arms up that, that you know, cutting hair all the time, um, is kind of hard on me, which is why I kind of let it go. So I also let it go because, um, mostly because my son was young and I was a single mom and I went to work at a daycare and he was able to go for free. So, and daycare was the biggest, one of the biggest bills I had. So it made more sense for me to work at the daycare where he could go for free. So I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm I have experience in, um, cosmetology, which is doing hair. I don't braid at all, but I do everything else, coloring, cutting, perms, all that. Um, so I'm a cosmetologist um, experience, I have childcare experience, I've worked in the public school system experience, and elder care. I lived um, as a live-in caregiver when my son was in middle school for two years with an elderly woman for her family. And I also worked in an adult daycare for Alzheimer's and dementia and um, special needs adults. So, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me guys, Whew. so yeah. Um, those those kinds of things you can't really do when you live this life so the kind of part-time job i'd be happy with is something i don't really have to think about doing um i'd love to do something online where i don't have to go into a job otherwise i could probably do something like work at a dollar tree stocking shelves or something like that um very low-key i only want to work 20 25 hours a week five days or six days a week five hours max a day so yeah all right how much money do you see yourself needing to be happy I already said that I could live I can live comfortably on 600 um, 800 would be nice because then I could put a little money aside but 600 is doable um, why don't you enjoy cooking um, I love cooking uh, well let's, let's take that back I'm a good cook I just don't like cooking I don't bake at all um, I don't know. I mean, I've been cooking forever. So now that I don't have to feed anybody but myself, I don't want to cook. Uh, do I have bad hair days? Yes, I have bad hair days every day. Okay, so this is for my people of color who know what natural hair is all about. As you can see today, I'm wearing my hair out, which happens about uh, once every four months. I am a lazy natural, which means I don't like to do my hair. Um, I personally wouldn't mind just shaving all my hair off to a very, very, very low um, teeny weeny afro, TWA. The only reason I'm growing my hair out, and it might sound stupid to some, but it's just what the first thing that popped in my head. When I found out my son had um, his baby and it was a girl, I had a mohawk. So that was last year. Um, and I mean a literal mohawk, shaved on the sides, um, shaved in on the sides into a V. It was shaped into a V into a, on the back. So I had a, an actual mohawk. And I had planned on keeping a mohawk because I had always wanted one. And last year, when I turned 45, I decided, Psh, I'm getting a mohawk. And so I did. 
And that was my goal, was to always keep a mohawk and just grow the top out. So when my son had um, Junie, and he had a girl, and I found out it was a girl, I decided that day that I found out that I was no longer going to cut my hair because my granddaughter is biracial. Her mother is white and they live in the area where her mom is from and it is a predominantly white area and um, none of my family has seen the baby or probably may never see the baby just because I don't know why that's how my family is so I wanted her to have a good role model of natural hair and that natural hair can be long so I decided I would be growing out my hair for her She's probably not going to have kinky hair like me. My son doesn't even have hair as kinky as mine. He has a pretty nice texture hair. And obviously her mom has um, wavy hair. So she's probably not going to have this really kinky hair that I have. Okay? So, she should be fine. But you never know. But I just wanted her to know that black women can have longer hair. We don't all have short hair. And that black hair does grow. Don't ask me why. There was no rhyme or reason. I just felt that way. And I'm hoping that it will be an inspiration to her to embrace whatever natural hair she has. And I'm hoping that she never, ever, ever relaxes it. And I'm hoping her mom never, ever, ever relaxes it with a chemical relaxer or blow dries it out to avoid her natural curls. All right. All righty. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. She doesn't know if she'll be able to handle her hair long term in a va in the van. Little water available. Blah 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 blah. I only cleanse my hair twice a month, and I don't use a lot of gels or other products. I use a moisturizer and an oil, and that's pretty much it. So there's not a lot of buildup in my hair. So um, I I only shampoo. Not I don't even shampoo my hair. I really kind of co-wash. But um, every few months I do do a good cleansing but yeah you can definitely um, manage natural hair with one gallon of water jug you know wet it down cleanse it rinse it doing um, do an apple cider vinegar rinse to make sure all the residues off rinse it again moisturize keep it because um, you see I keep my hair wrapped in hair wraps and I use lots of different things for hair wraps like leggings and all kinds of stuff so yeah it's very very doable but if you feel like in the first couple months it's too much cut it it's hair it grows back all right are you concerned about moisture and mold in your van home I have not had an issue with either of those um, have any large bugs made it into your van I know some have found mice but that seems to be when they're settled in one location for a long time I haven't been settled in one location long enough to have a mouse I hope that never happens I did have ants last year there's a video about it uh, I put I sprinkled borax down all over the place and they were gone within a couple of weeks. Um, do you have camping experience? Do you think that helped you transition to mobile? Do I did go camping with my son. I've never went camping at all as a kid. Um, but once I became a single mom and I have a boy, I had to step outside my comfort zone and deal with things like um, animals that I probably would have never decided to have as pets like mice and rats and gerbils and things like that and I decided that he needed to do some camping and we only did local local park camping um, you know the little parks that are in everybody's little um, area like a county park and you can pay to camp there overnight like 20 bucks a night or something so we used to do that a lot so I guess that helped but I've always loved to fish so I think you mentioned you have a simple wardrobe don't feel like you literally have to count everything, but I'm curious on what your total wardrobe consists of and if you're happy with it. Very happy with my wardrobe. Um, and I guess I should have uh, counted this out beforehand, but I didn't. So I have um, three maxi skirts, one black, ma my wardrobe is black, white, gray, um, mostly black and gray. Uh, I don't have very many solid white pieces except for three white shirts uh, summer shirts okay so I've got some maxi three maxi skirts one maxi um, dress in black I've got um, a black and gray jumper and a black and white jumper I've got two pairs of jeans uh, I just got rid of one pair that I wasn't wearing because I had three 
and I realized I wasn't wearing them and I didn't wear them much in the colder weather either um, I've got about six different t-shirts in some form of gray and black I've got mm, a couple of tanks I have a gray tank top I have a white tank top with a frog on it and I don't think I have a black tank top I don't have a black tank top I've got for winter I've got a really nice gray sweater um, and I've got a black and white um, what do you call it like a, the, the duster things um, it's sweater material but it's extra extra long but it stays open in the front I've got one of those it looks really nice with jeans and a t-shirt kind of dresses up the whole outfit and I've got a thick 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 black hoodie I've got a medium weight gray hoodie um, I have one tan colored winter coat I couldn't find it in black they didn't have the one I wanted in black because I like a hood in the winter and every other coat that was black didn't have a hood I always have a hood even if I don't end up using it just because I like having a hood um, what else do I have um, I have probably anywhere from eight to ten pair of underwear I've got about seven or eight tank tops that I wear as bras because I don't wear bras anymore I wear the tank tops that have the little built-in um, elastic in the front that's a bra my boobs aren't big enough to require a bra so I don't worry about it anymore um, socks I have about four pair of socks I wear flip-flops pretty much in the summer so I don't really worry about um, socks and that's something that can be easily washed out in the sink and hung up to dry overnight if I need socks every day in the winter I have one pair of wool socks that I wear with my boots in the winter um, what else am I thinking I do have one slip and a half slip the women know what a slip is I'm not gonna bother explaining and the reason being is um, I don't like it when it you can see through the dress. I, I don't like that. I don't want anyone seeing the outline of my legs. I don't like that. So I do wear a slip when I wear my skirts and dresses. So so be it. Um, what else? What else? What else? I have a pair of tennis shoes. I have a pair of boots that are really kind of hiking boots. But I wear them as snow boots as well. And they're black. Both shoes are black. The tennis shoes are black and gray. The hiking boots are all black. I have the two pair of Dollar Tree flip-flops I showed you guys I have one pair of shoes that's more like a dressier type shoe and it's like a black and bronzy color and I have one pair of wedge open toe flip floppy things um, I'm getting rid of them though because I didn't wear them at all yet this summer and so I feel like I'm probably not gonna wear them it was more because I was working I think so I will be doing an overhaul of some of my things just because, remember I was working, so there's a certain amount of things you, you can wear to work and you can't wear to work, so even if I was in a middle school, I had to dress somewhat decent. Okay, next. Toilet paper. Where do you put used toilet paper? I think I have the same portable toilet you had. Coleman and I only use it for peeing. I haven't looked into it but I would prefer to throw used paper in a bag rather than filling my tank. I don't like the idea of using plastic bags so I think a sort of wax paper bag if available. Anyways, seeing your new DIY toilet I noticed there's nowhere to put used paper. Okay, I do use plastic bags. I would you know, it'd be nice to get away from the plastic bags, but you go to grocery store, you go to Walmart, you go to Dollar Tree, you get a bag. I use them as my trash bag, so I do put my toilet paper in the plastic bag. Um, I was putting toilet paper in my um, porta potty, and the RV fluid that I was putting in there, um, it breaks it down. So I always use Scott, or um, I would go to Mom's organic market and get a roll of their toilet paper because it breaks down much much quicker much easier than the thick cotton nail and bounty and all that you don't really need all that uh, so yeah I mean I guess you can invest in the um, if you go to Dollar Tree they sell a pack of like 25 or 50 lunch bags you could always use the paper lunch bags and put your toilet paper in there and once it's like half full you know roll it down and go toss it in the trash that would work you know now that now that I think about it I might try it myself um, 
has your life changed by moving into your new home? Do you appreciate things differently? Do you take time to truly relax? Yes, my life has changed for the better. Um, I do appreciate things. I appreciate being just in random places like a library gazebo in their garden. Um, and do I take time to relax? Yes, I've always been one who pretty much relaxed. I mean, except for like when my bipolar was, you know, having an issue or something like that. I've pretty much been a chill kind of person for the most part. Um, three things that surprised you about mobile living. Oh, okay. Hmm, that's a good one. Um, probably how many people are doing it. Once I realized how many people across the world were doing this, that was surprising to me because I had really never heard about people purposely living in their cars. Obviously, you know, pe obviously, you know people live in their vehicles when they're down and out and they're broke and they've lost everything. But to actually purposely do this, I had never known people were doing this sort of thing and decking out these vans the way they do. Um, second thing that surprises me, how much I like it. How much I'm mad at myself for not knowing about this in high school and doing it right after graduation. Um, I definitely would have loved to have been doing this pretty much my whole life. Um, the third thing that surprises me... Hmm. I don't know if I have a... Ooh, boy. Third thing that surprises me about mobile living. Probably how against it so many people are or area or um, areas are I kind of feel like if you're not bothering anybody why it's you know it's so against and I guess anything that's not considered the normal people are just against governments are against local municipalities are against um, you don't live in a home there's something wrong with you that's not normal so I guess that is kind of surprising you surprising to me um, as far as your YouTube video titles, I don't see anything wrong with them. Thank you. You mentioned some people like clickbait titles, so you try to stay away from misleading titles. But as a surpriser, subscriber, I enjoy a quick description in video, like a heads up to what's included. Mind you, I'm not one to post videos. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I like some of your VEDA, VEDA videos, by the way. I really enjoyed these and appreciate the playlist you created. Yeah, I figured I'd put all the VEDA videos in a playlist. I love playlists, if you haven't noticed. Um, I appreciate everything in one place. So, yeah, I'm glad that you like that. And um, I'm trying not to do clickbaity titles, but, yeah, I am trying to be a little more descriptive with my title. And um, putting, you know, if I can put remember to put stuff in the description box, then I kind of do, so... All right, the next one is from Ingrid. Crystal, I have just recently started to watch your channel and follow you on Facebook. I'm truly inspired that you are living your life with a small footprint. I have a few questions. What made you decide to start this lifestyle and not the tiny home lifestyle? I answered that question already, and you can watch the video of my story. What has been your greatest challenge since living in the van full time? And what are your main revenue streams? Um, I'm gonna say my biggest challenge living in the van full time is probably um man that's a hard one because i don't really feel like i have a challenge living full-time in my van mm, probably finding free things to do that would probably be a little bit of a challenge because i don't want to be spending money to spend the day out of my van so finding free things is getting harder and harder and my main streams of revenue, I really right now have no stream of revenue. I have one last paycheck coming to me, and that's going to last me for the next month and a half or so. Uh, it'll get me, just get me to Arizona. So um, I will, again, have to either sell these t-shirts and stickers um, or um, get some, some um, patrons from Patreon, something. And um, I'll get a part-time job when I get to Arizona. All right, that was all from Ingrid. Thank you, Ingrid. All right, and the last one is from Rennie in a Mini. Hey there, I know you said you don't sleep in your minivan in the winter, but do you have any additional insulation for when it gets cool in the fall? I do not have any additional insulation. Um, 
What I've used in the winter that I have taken down now that it's gotten warm, but I still have them, is the Harbor Freight Insulated Moving Blankets. So, the Harbor Freight Insulated Moving Blankets I have in my back window, my side windows, and behind my driver and passenger seat. So I made myself a box. And, excuse me, they are two blankets on each side, two blankets on the front, two blankets on the back. So it's pretty thick. I did not have to stay in my van in the winter. Northern Virginia gets hecka cold and we get snow. So yeah. And I have a um, little buddy heater, the small, the smallest buddy heater, not the big one, but the one that sits on top of the green canister. So I do have that. Any advice on how to stay warm? Get a good sleeping bag. Like keep watching Craigslist in your area and searching for army sleeping bags or if you have an army store that you can get to that'll sell you one or if you know somebody in the military that can get one for you, get one of those army sleeping bags that has like all the different layers you can take off and put on. Those are the best kind. Um, so far I've heard of wearing lay so far I've heard of wearing layers using buddy heater or hot water bottles. Yep, those are pretty much I've never tried the hot water bottle, but that's pretty much all you can do if you're not gonna completely insulate. I've tried to watch your videos in sequence, but not sure that I actually have. Did you drill holes for your bungee cords? Yes, I I have no problems with drilling holes in my van. She is probably not going to go to someone else after I'm done with her. Um she inside was not the greatest of shape when I got her anyway so I have no qualms about drilling holes in in the metal or in the plastic so yes I do drill holes um, I have a temporary setup and I'm using a lot of them and I'm afraid I would run out of places to attach them if you don't mind drilling holes in your van I say go for it drill holes to have places to attach um, bungee cords do you have a privacy curtain to separate the rear from the front I do I have the two Harbor Freight blankets um, they're still in the front. Um, they're black. Um, and I have them hung on two different bungee cords and they cross over each other like this. So yeah. Uh, have you tried any of the Road Pro cookware? They have 12 volt appliances. I have not. The only thing I think that I would buy um, as far as a 12 volt appliance would be would be the um, hot water kettle thing. That would be the only thing because I don't want to be using up my battery bank um, for appliances when I really don't cook anyway so no okay those were all the questions so um, thank you to my subscribers who submitted questions I appreciate it and if you want your questions answered in next week's what's up Wednesday Q&A leave a comment on this video and all the comments this video will be answered next week so I thank you guys so much for all your time this is a long video almost an hour um, again I just want to say all the comments have been wonderful the advice has been wonderful the support has been wonderful those that have been have gone all the way back to video number one and have been binge watching me that is awesome I so appreciate it and I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and I just want to thank you guys because it's only been because you've been watching and spreading the word and sharing my videos that I've gotten that many subscribers and just this month just August all these people have just bombarded me and subscribed to me and it's amazing so I just thank you guys the best subscribers in YouTube you guys are so awesome and to that one troll who keeps putting a thumbs down on every one of my videos I don't know who you are but if you've got some kind of beef with me, let's settle it like adults and shoot me an a email or an inbox or a something and let's talk about it. Let me know in the comments why you don't like my videos. Don't just hit the thumbs down. That's just rude. I can't change your mind about things if I don't know what's going on. Not that I'm necessarily going to change your mind, but I would like to address the issue that you have with all of my videos. And for some reason, YouTube won't let me see who you are so that I can block you. But I'm not going to dwell on that. So, um, again, 
questions under I mean questions in the comments for this video will be answered next week on the what's up Wednesday I kind of like that title instead of just saying Q&A um, let's see today I'm going into the library I'm gonna try and get on the computer there um, or maybe use my slow computer and do some Teespring yesterday Teespring was acting up it would let me get on but I hope look forward to um, interacting with you guys on all social media my Instagram is Crystal Vanner my Facebook is Crystal Vanner and my Twitter is Vanner Crystal I don't really use Twitter very often so if you really want to find me Facebook and Instagram are best thanks guys for watching don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the heck out of it.